Hello again, Steve here, and today I wanted to talk about something a little bit silly maybe, but I think there's a lesson to it, which is how very often something that appears real and useful, or not useful, but just appears real and valid is not necessarily so. For example, you see these cracks in this window back here? Guess what? This window is not actually cracked. Those are a reflection, believe it or not, of a crack on my windshield ahead of here, reflecting off of there. Looks kind of weird, right? So it looks real, but it's not. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about another example of, of, of something, a couple of ideas that, have, that recur over and over and over again throughout as long as I can look back, get repackaged, renamed, and so on, but they are as equally invalid today as, is always, as they've always been. The current name for this kind of a diet is the keto diet. That's one thing, right? It's basically a starvation, high protein, high fat diet, essentially low carb, low carb diet. And the other thing is socialism, which once again, it keeps rearing its head under different names like social democracy, communism, fascism, uh, Islam, and so on. All different forms of basically collectivism as opposed to individualism, right? Now, I want to just come up with a few things, just a few areas where these similarities are in terms of the idea. And this, of course, the whole purpose of this conversation is to get us to examine if what we're seeing is actually valid and true and real. Okay. Low carb starvation diet um, and socialism. Okay. Both are ideas that are illogical. Uh, but even in spite of them being illogical, they are promoted because it's convenient for somebody to promote them. In other words, there's something in it for them, right? This low carb diet, it's illogical because we need carbohydrates. And, and a keto diet, the, the, the latest one, of course, has come up with many different names, but it's like 30 grams a day of carbs, which what that does is it promote, promotes us, our bodies, to go into a starvation mode. And if we didn't have mechanisms within our body, we would die because our brains need sugar to run. So if we're not eating any versions of sugar, which is what carbohydrates are, we have to then create and synthesize them out of proteins and fat. And as a result, we, we create these ketone bodies. And it's unhealthy. And people lose weight because they're starving. And they have what appear to be beneficial effects because they're losing weight and there's a an anomaly because there's always the unseen hand whenever we do something. There's pros and cons, right? So, um, and of course, there can be short-term benefits, but there are no long-term studies. And this is conveniently done because people who are promoting something, they only want to look at the bright side and not the long-term consequences, right? And socialism, of course, it's illogical. Because if somebody is to present to say the, uh, an ideal system is socialism, and what socialism is, is it says that you are less important than the group. It has to be, right? Because otherwise, how can you justify theft for the common good and so on, right? That's illogical because there is no group. There never is a group. A group is a concept. There's only individuals. Try talking to a group at some point. You can't do it. Or try getting a group to talk to you. The only time this can happen to you is a whole bunch of people yelling at once, or else in that the, the movie The Taurus, Toy Story, remember all those little little wee guys? They'd all talk at once. When one would speak, they'd all speak, right? You can only talk to a spokesperson of the group, but that spokesperson is what? That's an individual, of course. So that's completely illogical. All right? So they're both illogical. The second is um, they can both have the appearance of short-term gain. 
but long-term pain, you would say, right? Because in, the, in these, uh, these diets, and of course, this low-carb diet has, it rears its head every couple of years, and I'll talk about that, but let's just say low-carb diet. It can have the short-term effect because after all, whenever I hear people talking about these diets, it's for very specific reasons. It's for weight loss. And they'll say, oh, it's good for schizophrenic people and so on. But no, but no schizophrenic is chasing after these things. At least a very, very small portion. It's mostly a weight loss program. Darn, sorry for the scratching. I forgot to pick this up. It jumps up and down on my shirt anyways. And what a nuisance. Anyways, um, so weight loss, if, if, if it, but weight loss is not necessarily a health thing. And if you don't have health in mind in the long term, it's not sustainable, right? Because health, when, there's, when there is actual the trajectory of better health, the body levels out at where it kind of should be, right? Rather than what we think it should be, skinny or whatever, right? Um, so, but there can be that short-term satisfaction of weight loss, water loss, you know, scales, looks better and so on certain certain metrics that 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 are convenient as confirmation bias for this crazy idea right they can be there but just in the short term because it's not sustainable the same goes for socialism because people want comfort that's our nature is to want comfort right and if we can somehow pretend that just because somebody is giving us some stuff, he didn't steal it from somebody else, we can have that sense of at least momentarily we get something to eat, a bed to lie in or whatever, or a road to drive on or what have you. But in the long term, it's like a cancer because it only grows and grows and grows. And at a certain point, the people who are being taken from, they rebel, you know, and they just say, well, we're not going to give anymore. So then there goes your socialism into a tailspin, right? The last thing that I'm going to talk about is that they, ha they these things ha are recurring fads, right? And both, like the keto diet is, is the latest terminology, the great latest name for this low-carb starvation diet that's gone on and on. I mean, I wrote a book back, what, 25 years ago, it's, and somebody once told me it's the be best book ever written on uh, diet and nutrition and exercise, but that's just somebody's opinion. But it's called Optimum Health. You can find it on... Uh, if you look up Optimum Health, uh, Steve Maloney or Stephen Maloney, you can find it in certain used bookstores in the States and stuff still. It's out of print now. But anyway, uh, I did research this way back then. And I remember talking about ketone bodies and how it ha that's what they, they come up when there's starvation going on and so on and so on. And back then there was the, I don't know, the, the South Beach diet or whatever. And there was the, uh, there was the, eventually there was the, after I wrote that, there was the Atkins diet, and there was the wheat belly diet, and so on, and there's the keto diet. And these are all just versions of the same thing. It's basically every once in a while people say, oh, carbs are bad. So now there has to, somebody comes up with another thing that you got to eat, you know, this many grams and that many grams and what have you. But it's all the same thing. It's at the end of the day, it's a starvation diet. And it's usually you're allowed to eat stuff that people normally think are unhealthy, like bacon and so on. So it's like uh, it's like making an unhealthy diet uh, sound healthy, a, a tasty fat, high fat diet, basically with high protein diet, low carbs, very little fruit, and so on. All of the important things, like fruit, for example, on the if you go to a, it, if you do the research into it, there's there's nothing there's nothing that correlates stronger to long term health of a human being. Than, than the amount of fruit consumption. And yet, this keto diet says you can't eat any fruit. So it's completely bonkers. It's off the charts bonkers. And the same goes for socialism. It keeps recurring in terms of a fad. There's a, you know, there's a craze. Just like the keto diet's a craze now, and it'll die out in a year or two years or whatever. And people will get become sensical, sensical again, and then they'll get to it soon. And then some, some other uh, uh, opportunist will come up with another name. And it'll be the next craze, guaranteed, absolutely guaranteed. The same with socialism, right? The new terminology now is social democracy, right? But it's had all of its things. It was progressive, and it was before that it was just socialism. Before that it was communism. Don't, don't, don't forget, of course, that back in the uh, 
like in the 30s and stuff like that. I mean, the New York Times and all those, they just loved communism. They were, they wrote glowing reviews about Stalin and so on. And around that time, they loved Hitler. Hitler was a big socialist. Mussolini was a big socialist. All these crazy nutcases. And, you know, um, Mao Zedong, who killed, you know, 40 million people or whatever, he's a big socialist. They loved him and so on. So they had all these different phases. And right now they got these guys like, you know, Bernie Sanders and Justin Trudeau and and Elon Omar, all these crazy people because uh, they believe in socialism, but it's popular again. But it'll die out because people will figure out that this is nonsense and it it's it has a short-term gain for certain people. Oh, vote for, vote for him and I get free health care or whatever. But then down the road, there's no health care for my kids because everything's bankrupt. So, um, yeah. They're not related, but I just thought I would bring it up because basically a lot of times when we see something, we think it's real, we think it's valid, it's actually invalid when we really begin to look at it. And I, I think that, you know, two of the big things that are important in our lives are how we take care of our health. And one of that is that part of that is nutrition. And we have these, we have people trying to sell us these deals over and over again. I, imagine that a starvation diet is somehow that's healthy for you right? And the same goes for a, a, a socialism, which is um, a freedom starvation diet, basically. It's, it's sort of a, so it's, it's two sides, right? It's the individual ill health and social ill health. Uh, they're both illogical because health is more logical, you know? So anyways, I just thought I would point that out about how there's many things in the world that appear to be real, but they ain't real. They ain't valid. But yet we fall trapped to them so often. So it's something to be aware of. Steve here, great chatting. If you like what I'm doing, please like, subscribe, and share. And once again, I will try from now on to pick up my mic. Otherwise, you scratch, 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 scratch for the whole thing. Anyways, and if you want to get in contact with me uh, in, any, in another way, go to innergenie.com. You can message me there. Talk again soon. Bye for now.